And here we go. Hi there. Um, welcome to my kitchen once again here on this Saturday afternoon. And I'm doing something a little bit different here, I guess, in that I'm actually filming a... Um, I better start this. There we go. <laughs> I am actually uh, filming a uh, video to uh, edit together and uh, put on YouTube. And I figure just for the heck of it, well, might as well uh, stream this live just because why not? Um, essentially, it's the making of, <laughs> and literally, because that's what we're doing. We are making uh, corned beef and cabbage <clears throat> for my uh, guests tonight. I will say a little bit more about that in a moment. Yes, hi there. Hi. Uh, I guess a notice must have come out, but thank you for showing up. But yes, uh, uh, it's a day late, but here we are. We're out preparing the corned beef and cabbage. Um, if you'll excuse me for a moment, though, I've got to wash these potatoes. These are big red potatoes. This will only take a second. Well, a few seconds. Since minutes are made up of seconds, that's to be expected. There we go. Hi, Trouble. What are you doing there? As if I had to ask. Seriously, Trouble. <laughs> uh, no Trouble, you don't like potatoes. I promise. Anyway, of course, you got to start off with the red potatoes and that, trouble. Come on, move, move your little furry head. Move it, move it, move it. There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Irish cuisine is an oxymoron. That is true. <laughs> Just the other day, in fact, I think I heard the first uh, Irish joke that did not involve liquor. So, yes. <laughs> I can say this because I'm from Boston, where, of course, we have our, uh, we are proud of an Irish heritage, and even though I'm Italian, uh, of Italian descent, I mean, uh, again, we've had a strong Irish presence in Boston uh, pretty much, um, well, for at least the past century or so. Anyway, word is getting out now. Oh, hi there. Yes. Well, uh, I should say I'm not asking anybody to interrupt what their schedule for whatever they're doing this afternoon. I mean, if it, I mean, really, it's like if you want to uh, play this video in the background or watch it later, feel free to do so. I'm not demanding that you show up. But still, it is nice to have some company. And that's really why I set this up here on YouTube Live so that, uh, well, just that. Finally doing the old corned beef and cabbage here. Uh, yes, because as you know, my work was, uh, my St. Patrick's Day was delayed due to work, <laughs> uh, a, an emergency work road trip, which couldn't be helped. So, but I mean, hey, I have all the fixings here and there's no law that says you have to have corned beef and cabbage only on St. Patrick's Day. So why not? I'm also filming this as well, as I mentioned. I have my uh, iPhone set up here too, so I'm gonna be doing uh, both live and filming this at the same time. Um, so that hopefully I can edit the best parts of this together into a, uh, you know, into a uh, more typical uh, video. Because, well, I like corned beef and cabbage and I'm going to be trying something a little, I shouldn't say really different, uh, more like a slightly different method for uh, making the uh, corned beef this year. Oh, I'm still going to make it in cast iron, but I'm going to try cooking it to temperature instead of cooking it for a simple eight hours. And hopefully this way it will take less than eight hours too. Um, each year, pretty much I would uh, get this all together throw it into a uh, big cast iron Dutch oven, and then uh, just uh, uh, slow cook it until it falls apart, which means over the course of eight hours. But I'm going to uh, tr hopefully lessen the time by cooking to temperature. And well, oh, good. Oh, Joan Surf. Oh, well, I'm glad you like the chicken and rice. Well, thank you very, very much. And again, it's it was a very simple dish, but it's certainly one I'm proud of. So anyway, here is our first step. I mean, 
I, this is obviously one reason why corn beef and cabbage is so, is so uh, popular. It's easy to make. I mean, really, all we have to do is cut up our vegetables and throw them in the pot. Speaking of which, I want to be sure to get this on cam. As I said, I'm actually filming this at the same time. So, yeah, you get to see my mistakes, too, as I do this. How nice. Um, maybe I shouldn't crack. Yeah, there we go. Um, I think I'll just put all these in a... All right, never mind. Just put this aside here. And I have shown my uh, South African poiki pot before. So, here we go. Good enough, which means... Now, let's get this right about here. There we go. Yeah, this thing is uh, a good eight liters in size, or a little bit more than nine quarts. So there's certainly more than enough room for this. And really, all we have to do is just cut up our vegetables and throw them in the pot. And I mean, literally, throw them in the pot, because why not? You know, after this, just going to do some celery, some onions. And then after that, it'll be time to bring out the corned beef. Did I miss any? I think I missed a couple pieces. Here it is. And there we go. Plop. So there's our first step. We've got our, uh, put the, we've got our red potatoes. And now let's move this aside. Ugh. And we will work on um, number two, although I should. There we go. And that's good. We have some extra potatoes, too. And now comes number two. Celery. I love celery. Okay. One second again while I wash this off. I mean, I say this every year, and I mean it every year. It's like, why should you simply boil your corned beef and cabbage when you can cook it in a cast iron Dutch oven and you will have so much more flavor. And really flavor is what it's all about. All right, what do we have here? How many damn people you're cooking for? Um, actually, I do have two of my uh, close friends uh, coming up to visit tonight, in fact. Uh, they will be here probably about five to six. So that gives me plenty of time, as I said, to slow cook this corned beef. So it's not just going to be me and the cats this time. <laughs> I am actually going to have company. Which is a good excuse to cook big. In addition to this, I'll be making some cold cannon because I love cold cannon. And I'm going to try something as well with a uh, big giant chocolate chip cookie for uh, dessert. So that takes care of number two. Got to put this back in the video. There we go. Right, and that's number two. Ugh. Okay. Oh, where is. I'm going to put this aside for now. All right. And then the celery goes back. Mm. I love celery. I really do. Mmm. It's low calorie too. Mm. <laughs> Hello again, truffle. <laughs> so I guess if you want to attract a cat, you cook celery. <laughs> okay. Hello, Cynthia Wesley. But yeah, this is another kind of like a spur of the moment type of thing, I'm afraid. So, I mean, as you know, as I said, I went on that road trip for work um, 
from Wednesday night through last night, and I got home at about 11 o'clock last night. So first thing I had to do, of course, was comfort the cats after leaving them here by themselves for practically two days, and then went to bed. But I'm feeling pretty good today, which is why I'm going ahead and uh, making the, uh, again, the corned beef and cabbage. One second again while I wash this. Oh, and by the way, no, the cat stuff is not going to be all over the food either, so. Because this is YouTube. I can guarantee there are going to be some people who, who are going to call me out and call me unsanitary for allowing a cat on the table. <laughs> He's my cat. It's my table. Nobody's going to die from this. And then, anyway, and as I said, I washed all this off. And he hasn't touched this anyway. What are you doing, Trouble? <laughs> is he trying? Is he actually going out a bag of onions? <laughs> Right. There we go. Have to be careful, of course. Sharp knife. Or I try to make my knife as sharp as possible. Uh, yeah, I did not bother peeling the carrots because there's no point. We're going to slow cook these things until they're nice and soft. So there's really no point at all uh, peeling the carrots. And besides, I love uh, the carrots with the skins on. Careful. There we go. One. Hello, everybody as well. Hello, Terry Sinchev, Rick Stumbaugh, all the regulars I see, and thank you very much. I'll say again, I'm not asking anybody to interrupt their schedule. You should always watch the replay if you want. Um, and besides, as you can see, it's not especially exciting right now. Oh, that reminds me as well. One thing I have to do, turn on the oven. There we go. The oven is set, it is preheating now. Careful, Trouble, I don't wanna hurt you. To 275 degrees, because once again, we're slow cooking it. My hope is that I can have this done in about four hours rather than eight, because I'm going to be braising this in a covered, cast heavy cast iron pot. And as I mentioned again, I'm going to be cooking this to temperature anyway. Um, my understanding is the temperature to get good um, beef that is uh, very tender, uh, but doesn't necessarily just simply fall apart, you have to go for around 200 to maybe 205 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what I'm going to aim for. Ugh, once again, put this in the... Uh, perspective of the, there we go, of the uh, other camera. Throw them in. And hey, best, oh, nuts, lost one. And hey, best of all, come on, good grief. All right, lost two. All right, um, Maybe I'll do a couple more carrots. Everybody loves carrots. Anyway, as I said, at least that means today is the day I'll be able to take the corned beef out of the brine. 
And I know there was one person here who mentioned that he is actually doing a corned pork. Uh, I think it was pork loin, loin because that's a lot less expensive than, um, um, than beef. So I would like to hear the results of that because just to see how it turned out. I'm betting it turned out great. You know, last year when everything was scarce, uh, I could not find corned beef. And so, yeah, last year I used a chuck roast and I corned that and it turned out just fine. Oh, and the birds are back too. I'll bet you can even hear them in the background. The cats are going crazy, in fact. And that means I do believe it's getting close to the time to finally let them out to explore the neighborhood. Probably within the next week or two, I think. All right, so there we go. One last thing. Onions. There's one. And two. Ugh. These are big onions. That should be fine. So my schedule for Saturday is watching YouTube. Well, well, thank you then. <laughs> and besides, I, I know you could always very well flip back and forth between this and uh, other uh, videos, which is fine. After all, it's, you know, your YouTube. Okay. Onions are so much fun. Oh, good. The oven is already at the right temperature. Well, 275 is not a high temperature anyway. So even if I still had an electric stove, that would not have taken long. There we go. I'll definitely have to clean all this up in a moment. But I'm almost done with this preparation. Okay. Let's see here. Next is we've got to peel off this. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm spoiled by Shrek because I think of layers every time I peel an onion. Mm. Ogres are like onions. You know how? They stink? Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one more. And best of all is I don't have to dice this these onions. Just big chunks is all we need. They will come apart anyway. Come on, how hard is it to? I realize I'm doing this entirely wrong and I'm sure if someone were a chef, they'd probably be correcting me. I won't mind the advice, but nonetheless, I'm just trying to get this done as quickly as possible. There we go. So that means simply, as I said, all I have to do are big chunks. Oh, yeah. Starting to feel the onions. <laughs> onions! So I've got to watch myself because, again, I'm using a <laughs> sharp knife. Have to be careful. Yeah, I am, no, I am not interested in having YouTube Live show me cutting my finger off or some other fun little accident like that. So all I can do is be careful. And there we go. Knife goes aside. 
And then I gotta pick up my mess. Now finally, the last one. There we go, right about here. As I said, this is under the point of view of another camera. There we go. Now a nice big pot of vegetables here. Quite a bit of it, in fact. Hope I haven't overdone it again. All right. There we go. That's the extra pieces. Now, next up. Oh, where is my trash barrel? Where is my trash barrel? Okay. I have to move it because of the camera. Ugh. Anyway. There we go. Because, as they say in Ratatouille and many other places, keep your workspace clean. Next, paper towel, because there's a lot of extra liquid from all of that. Now, into the pot, we just simply stir, mix the vegetables around a little bit. There we go. And phase one is done, Pato veggies. Which reminds me now it's time I can put this aside. Let's go into the fridge. There it is. And where did I put that other thing? Here it is. Haha. <laughs> Next up. We have our spices. When we toasted the spices two weeks ago, these are the extra spices that we put aside. And now is the reason why we put them aside, so that we can use them to help cook this corned beef. And finally remember to get a little cheesecloth bag, or some, I'm not sure if this is cheesecloth, but this is definitely a uh, cloth bag, so that, yeah, one thing is, about this is that if you throw the, oh, I've got some all over the place already. <laughs> if you just simply throw all of these seeds and everything into the pot, well, they'll get into the food. So um, even though they'll be softened, I'm not sure if people really want to start chewing on pieces of coriander and cinnamon and extra bay leaves and the like. So <laughs> finally realized you should use let me see, how am I going to do this neatly? Um, maybe I open this up a little bit. Let's see if we can do it just like this. Am I on camera? Not really. The thing is, I got to do this on camera too. Come on, how hard is it to... Okay, this is not getting more on the table. This is, how am I gonna do this without getting it? Oh, okay, here's a thought. An amazing invention called a spoon, how about that? There we go. Much better. Oh, come on. Doesn't help get it out of the bag easy, though. There we go. Now 
Yeah, there are definitely extra spices here to be cleaned up, which is what will be done. It's inevitable. I mean, with all of these little seeds all over the place. Good thing this is my kitchen and I can clean it up. Yeah, this is the part they never show you in those cooking videos. The mess. All right. With that, we are just about ready here. Okay. There we go. All right. With that, we get a nice bag full of spices here. Try not to spill it. Let me show it to the camera, show it to you folks. Nice bag full of spices. Hopefully this bag is good enough to allow me to tie it together. Okay, good. There we go, that helps. And maybe one more. There we go, good enough. There we go, we got our spice bag here. And into oh, the pot it goes. Plop. I'll try to pick it down, there we go. All right, now once again, we clean up our mess, my mess. And then once we do that, we're actually ready to go on to the next step, which would be the corned beef. That means I'm gonna have to move this all around a little bit because I'm gonna have to do some work at the stove. And of course, that's what you folks are here to see. So let's do this as best as we can. All right. Anyway, that, Weird that you can eat dry but not fresh. Um, oh, I see. Uh, I was telling me the science of it. Yeah, <laughs> I ignored it because it was boring and not about cast iron. Yeah, I certainly understand that. Okay. Uh, take the cinnamon stick out. Yeah, I have not had a problem with that. Look at that. There we go. It, besides, it's all in the bag anyway. Okay, so next up, as I said, now for the fun part, because oh boy. Well, uh, good news is uh, the bag didn't break. Oh boy. Uh. And I'm gonna have to readjust the camera here. Let me stop this and start it again. There we go. Now I'm actually gonna have to retake this shot, which means take it off and put it on again. There we go. And that is known in movies and the like as a retake. <laughs> However, here, take a look at this. Anyway, there we are. The bag did not break. And I'm happy to say that in here we've got like about 16 pounds of corn beef. So about one third of this is going to come out. And I'll have to work on it from there. Let me see. What I can do is, what I should do is get this over to the sink. That's what I should do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop this then, which means now come some readjustments. Move this thing over to the sink. There we go. That's 
That's a pretty good view. Yeah, that would embarrass me. Okay, that looks good. And now it's time for you guys to take a trip to my sink. By the way, I hope the uh, sound has been okay. I'm simply using the sound from the webcam today. All right, I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. How am I supposed to do that? Oh, yeah, I'm loosen this part. There we go. There we go. This I can probably straighten up, and then I think, in fact, I know we need to raise this a little bit. Oh, it's this one. Okay. There we go. Well, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do it either. All right. Ugh. Oh, boy. Oh, mother. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Hey, it worked. <laughs> I. Like I said, there'll be a better close-up on the other video. At least I hope so. Maybe I can just simply undo this bag. And that way I can actually leave the other two big pieces of corned beef brisket in the brine. Or maybe not. I think it was too tight. And it's dried out. Oh, wait a second. I think I've got it. Come on. Recording, yes, it is. All right, um, ha, got it. There we go. Means, I think, actually, probably should have put this in the other sink, and here's why. Uh, over and down. Uh, there we go. There we go. Now I can rinse it out. All right. Uh, hold on, I gotta dig up a bowl to put the corned beef in after it's done, after it's rinsed out. Mr. Whoopi's famous three-dimensional blackboard. Anyway, yeah, uh, once it's washed out, I will keep it in here rather than just leaving it in the sink or something, which would not be fun. All right, so now we've got the next part. This thing is definitely filming. So here we go. Corned beef, in fact, <laughs> coated with spices. Nice. And this one is, in fact, is this the biggest one. All right. This one, in fact, is the flat cut. So there we go. <laughs> the expensive part. Boy, doesn't that look yummy. <laughs> Do this. And there we go. Nice. There we go. Nice huge hunk of corned beef brisket. Where did I just put that? bowl. Here it is. There we go. Uh, there. Boy, doesn't this look appetizing. And remember, it's supposed to be pink because after all, that was the whole point of the brine. So, 
Now that we've done that, can put this aside for the moment. And now it's time to move over to the next phase, which is over to the stove. Here we go. Because We are going to sear this corned beef before we put it in the pot. Because, you know, flavor and all that. Let's see if I can get a good view here. That's a pretty good view, not bad, right there. All right, that might work. Okay, which means time to, should have been heating this thing up before. Oh, well, that's all right. Well, that's good. That means before, before it gets hot, I can lift it up and show what we're looking at here. This, in fact, is the uh, Walking Liberty Half Dollar Skillet. Last year's Cracker Barrel Skillet. And I decided to take it out and freshen it up. All right, yes, indeed, it's Lodge. Um, you know, up until recently, this this handle here on the front would have instantly identified it as a Lodge, although now Lodge has been putting their um, logo on it as well. However, a lot of these companies here, the Asian-made companies, have been uh, producing uh, cast iron skillets that seem to be exact replicas of the Lodge 10-inch skillet. You know, it's like when you go on... I'm not talking about um, the USA, the elite cast iron makers, you know, like Field and Stargazer and all that. I'm talking about if you go onto eBay now and you uh, look for cast iron skillets, there's got to be at least a dozen companies now on eBay all selling relatively inexpensive cast iron skillets, including Lodge. And they're all Asian made. That's just how it is. Um, but... They're also all imitations of Lodge cast iron cookware. So, I mean, people, as you know, there's a lot of Lodge bashing going on, not among you folks, not among this crowd here, but you know how it is. It's like, if you break out a lot, if you talk about Lodge cast iron, it's inevitable. The comments will come up. I don't like Lodge. It's too rough. It's too heavy. It's not like it used to be. It's not vintage. Well, Lodge is still doing great business with these cast iron pans. Good enough that they now seem to have a lot of imitators. So evidently they must be doing something right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Cynthia Wesley. I love my Lodge and my, uh, what's the say? Bushi? Oh, oh, I don't get it. Oh, Stargazer, I guess. Yeah. All right. So anyway... We're actually almost done already. It's almost time for this thing to go into the oven. That's what I mean. This really was not that difficult, you know, because all we really had to do was just that. Um, chop up the vegetables. And we're taking the extra step of searing the corned beef. You don't even have to do that if you want. You could literally just take it out of the bag, wash it off, and then just put it right in the pot. The spices are ready. So this is not going, this part here is not going to take much longer. Uh, it looks like we've been at this for maybe a little less than 45 minutes. So once again, thank you very much. Um, all I'm really going to do is um, sear this corned beef. And then I'm going to uh, give it a coating. I'm going to coat it with brown mustard. So that we're really going to have a lot of flavor with this. It's going to go in the pot with the mustard. And of course, I'm also gonna have to uh, put in some beer to braise it, plus the spice bag. So all of that together, we are gonna have ourselves some real, we are gonna have some tasty corned beef. I haven't even brought out the cabbage. Um, one thing I've done each year has been to wait on the cabbage. Wait until well, before, it was like about an hour and a half before this was done slow cooking. As I said, I used to keep it in the oven for eight hours. 
Um, now I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, but the idea is we don't simply want the cam the corn beef, no, the cabbage to be so soft that it's completely mush. I want it to have a, just some little bit of chew. And I found that putting in the pot about an hour and a half before it was done was uh, good enough to uh, give the, you know, to uh, braise the cabbage and it make it nice and chewy and tasty too, absorbing the flavor. And I do believe our pot is... Uh, starting to uh see it starting to smoke so i'd say we're at just the right point here all right um that means oh one sec again a couple of things i have to get out one of which is that mustard that i just mentioned the other it has a little bit of oil no not that there we are all right. <clears throat> Finally, the last thing. A couple of paper towels. Because as you know, you really can't sear a wet piece of meat. And yes, you can make all of the little suggestive comments you want about that. But um, you know what I mean. That means... For the moment, let's move this to one side. Move this to one side right now. There we go, that's a pretty good view. That means we have to try to dry it off at least a little bit, even though this thing's been in the brine for like two weeks. So it's got a lot of liquid. In fact, I think I gotta drain some of it. but I want to try to at least sear it a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> oh yeah, I better open the window too. <laughs> You know what happens when I sear meat in my kitchen? <laughs> yeah, definitely time to open the window. There we go. Ooh, that's affecting the uh, pan because there's definitely a breeze coming in. All right, well, fortunately, I don't need to completely cook it. All I'm doing is searing it. So. Now that we've done that, time to get down to it. Oh, oh good, I do have tongs, okay. Here we go. Now that I'm thinking of it, this might even be too big. Crap, I may actually have to change this. This might be too big. Okay, change of plan. Let's turn this off. <laughs> and this is why, <laughs> this is always what you never see behind the scenes because it looks like I'm gonna have to get a bigger pan. All right. Well, I'll just have to clean this one off later, too. Oh, no point. no point wasting an oiled pan, but I'll deal with that later. All right, I'm going to dig out the big guns. Ugh. And that means... Hello to our BSR number 10 Century Series Cast Iron Skillet. Let me do this over here. And 
We will do this again. So, that means I have to start heating it again. Which means that's going to take another few minutes, unfortunately. And I better close the window so that the breeze doesn't affect the heating. Sorry about that delay there, but that's how it goes, I guess. Yeah. So that should definitely be, be big enough to sear this uh, this brisket here. <laughs> Stumpy or old lightning. Well, lightning is a number seven. He's actually a little smaller than that large 10 inch. You know, technically he might even be the same lightning that is, might even be the same size. BSR pans were a little bit bigger than other models, including Lodge. And a number seven BSR is about the same as a number eight for any other, just about any other maker. All right. If this were a Hollywood film, that hot pan would be a weapon. This is true, yes. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you could picture smacking somebody with that, you know, with that and getting a burn mark, the shape of the uh, Walking Liberty half dollar. But I'm not exactly going to do that right now. <laughs> right. So at this point, we are playing the waiting game, and I'm sorry for the delay. Pause this. I just have to remember to turn that camera back on before I um, should probably lower this a little bit. There we go. There we go. That's pretty good. All right, but anyway, <laughs> frying pans, who knew? <laughs> yes, exactly. So, <laughs> all right, anyway, but thank you for watching, everybody. This is essentially how I <laughs> film my videos here. Uh, it's not very exciting, as you can see, and I make mistakes, and I have to redo things, but, well, the end result is usually worth it, or at least I hope so. All right, came to hear the sound from South Korea. <laughs> okay, my ex-wife said, when it smokes, it's cooking. When it's black, it's done. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good cast iron cook, all right. Am I already seeing some uh, smoke coming from that BS from this uh, century? That sure didn't take long. I'm curious about that. Let's check this with the uh, thermal gun shows about well, four okay 400 in one in one spot getting close uh from the looks of it i'd say maybe about another minute or so and it should be ready as far as i can tell it's centered all right somebody write that into a screenplay <laughs> Go ahead and do so. Of course, you know, there are very strict rules about writing and publishing screenplays and that you have to be careful. Uh, you don't make your stuff publicly available. Otherwise, somebody could sue you for copyright over it. Okay. What else do we have here? What oil are you using? I just got out olive oil this time. Um, largely because, as I said, I'm simply using it to sear. Let's see, what else have I missed here? Uh, I have an LC's cat. I have a BSR and some liquor say that my mom gave me. Well, that, that, well that's good. I'd say definitely uh, get some use out of it. Terry Stinchef, I only have five large skillets and one large camp Dutch oven. LC's cat, I have an Austin Foundry skillet that I won from a cast iron group. Nice. They're a high-end brand too, but I like my lodges better. <laughs> okay. I have spam. Okay. Oh, I see. That's what you meant. Spam calls. Okay. Um, doesn't seem like there have been any spammers on this YouTube live today, and that's good. So. <laughs> It's already written into Tangled. Well, the frying pans, who knew, but yes. I don't recall any part in Tangled where someone was actually burned by that pan. 
They just simply used it as a club and, well, and, and sort of as a sword, too. <laughs> Now I'd say we're probably getting around the time to sear. Let's check that uh, temperature one more time. Oh yeah, much better. Much better. All right. That means let's start this up again. And it's time to do it. Which means once again, let's get out that oil. There we go. I like how this thing is not really rapidly pooling on the side here. So it looks like the stove, looks like this pan is fairly level, not completely, but fairly level on the stove top. So we're doing pretty good. All right, once again, I think it's time to do it. And as Rick Sanchez says, away we go. Good enough. Triangular. Boy, at, at best, although even though I did leave the fat cap on yet, <laughs> this thing's got to be at least three inches thick in a couple of places. And it, and it weighs, since it's about one third roughly of that 16 or 17 pound brisket, we're talking like <laughs> probably close to five pounds here. The corned beef they sell at the store, and while there's nothing wrong with that, is in much smaller packages, I found. I mean, most of the time, those ones, you know, the ones that come in the plastic bags with the uh, jelly brine, they're usually in the area of anywhere from two to three pounds, meaning that you'd have to get two of them to equal this. And even though they're on sale for $3 a pound, which is more expensive than it had been in previous years. <laughs> that still means it would cost, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe about $15 or so. Well, $15, quite frankly, would be worth it, I think, for a nice big uh, piece of corned beef like this. All right. Okay. Don't want to be impatient here. All I'm doing is searing it, and I'm not, I'm not thoroughly cooking it, so. <laughs> Maybe another minute or so, then I'll turn it over. Meanwhile, let's uh, empty this thing out. I'm going to put it back in here when it's done. Oh, yeah, there's a breeze coming in. You might even be able to hear that, the way it's affecting the uh, flame on the stove. Anyway, as I said, the, the big thing I'm doing different this year, boy, I hope that thing can even fit in the, yeah, it'll fit in the pot. Uh, the big di difference this year is that I'm going to be using a thermometer and cooking this to temperature. And that's going to be an interesting test for this uh, Bluetooth thermometer that I have. So I just realized I'm using my phone to record this. <laughs> So I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to get the uh, Bluetooth thermometer to work to record it. May actually have to dig out another camera. All right. Nonetheless. Okay. Another way to the side. Time for the flip. A lot of liquid here, not much searing, I'm afraid. In fact, that's a problem. Not sure very well. Well, there is a little bit of color, but I will be the first to agree this is not the best searing job. Hmm. Let's put this in the bowl for the moment. And what I will do is... Ugh, careful. 
I get a glove is what I will do. I think I will drain this extra liquid. There we go. Wait a couple of minutes for this thing to get hot again, and then try searing. See if that helps. All right. My three and a half pound store-bought one was on sale for $4.99 a pound at Publix and Harris Teeter. Shrank up by almost half with minimally spiced. We'll try my own pickling next year. Oh, definitely. You definitely want to do that. I mean, it, I mean, besides making it yourself, I've, I've been saying this again and again. When you make your own corned beef, it's so much better than the stuff in the store. But even the store-bought stuff adds some additional spices to it. Or do what I'm do what I'm about to do here. When this is after this goes in the pot, well before it goes in the pot actually, I'm going to coat it with brown mustard. So that should help as well. Granted, again, since we're going to be braising this, it, it is definitely not going to have a crust like a steak. There is no denying that. We don't eat steak, I'm sorry, we don't eat corned beef for the crust. We eat it because it's corned beef, which is fine. That's just how it is. <laughs> All right. Let's check that one more time, shall we? Yeah, see, we're back down again to under 400 here. So in fact, let me up the heat a little bit. Make sure this is centered. And this is what I mean about um, how I'm doing this live. I realize this is not the most exciting thing in the world. <laughs> That's why I didn't ask you to interrupt your schedule for this. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, well, I know St. Patrick's Day was yesterday, but hey, you could still do this. Get to, I mean, it's an after St. Patrick, it's the day after St. Patrick's Day. It's probably still on sale. Get yourself a nice uh, thing of corned beef. And uh, just that, you can rinse it off. Um, use the spice packet. Throw in some extra spices if you have it, even if it's just like, say, salt, pepper, garlic powder. If you have a decent spice cabinet, correction. That's not, that's not fair to folks. If you have a spice cabinet with things like coriander and cumin and the like, definitely you can coat it with that. Then brush on some um, brown mustard. Pour some beer into the pot and braise it. You will have an exceptional corned beef, even, even if it's store-bought. My plan with doing this uh, from scratch, of course, is to, to uh, kick it up a notch, as they say. And hopefully that's what it's going to be. Much better. All right, much better. All right, here comes searing part two. That's what I mean. This is even cool enough for me to hold on to. My plan now is, after a few minutes, I will take it out, <laughs> heat it up, and sear each side a second time, because this side is definitely not as wet as it was the first time. So, hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit of color on that. And then, finally, we'll be ready for the pot. But yes, you did make a good point that this, that the uh, corned beef shrinks as it's cooked. So, even though this is one huge big hunk of meat, <laughs> it should still fit okay in, into the pointy pot. 
In fact, all things considered, I don't think I'll use the Bluetooth thermometer. I think I'll use the uh, reliable, old reliable wired probe thermometer because the wire is metal. So that shouldn't be a problem of having it in with the uh, cover on. He was here earlier, but connection issues. No, so I'm sorry to hear that. All right. Thirty-seven now. Hopefully, it's here. now I'm starting to hope it'll be done in time. I'm hoping we can eat by about six or so. I'm hoping that braising this in a covered pot can have this done in three to four hours. But that's what we will find out. I worked like a puppy cleaning and cooking iron yesterday, getting those Mother's Day dickies together. Mother's Day? Oh, you're thinking in advance. I mean, we still have a couple of months for Mother's Day. But yeah, yesterday, of course, or at least for a lot of people, was a big cooking day. Sorry, I missed it. Well, still, at least if nothing else, I'm yeah, compensated by work, and I even got some overtime in. So we're so that should not be doing too badly. All right. All right. Let's not be too impatient. I think I'll wait about another minute before I take it out and drain the water again. And then hopefully I'll be able to do a double-sided sear. And that should be enough. And I just realized I forgot something else, too. Uh, I forgot to move the oven rack so that it'll fit this pot when it goes into the oven. Now, I'll take care of that when it's ready. Again, this is all the type of stuff that goes behind the scenes in the making of these videos. I make a lot of mistakes and do my best to correct them. All right. Okay, good. At least I didn't forget that part. All right, now that we've done that, get this out of here one more time. Oh, we got a little color this time. So, based on that, I think I might be able to just simply sear. The other side one more time. Now let me turn this one over. Of course, this was the fat too. But as you can see, I think we've got a little bit of color this time. Okay, once this is hot enough, I will do one last sear, and then we'll finally be done. We're already at over 400, so it's pretty good, maybe another minute or so. Yeah, you may have noticed that when it comes to cooking meat, I have been converted to cooking by temperature. I've said this a lot of times, and I'm going to keep saying it a lot of times because I've liked the results. That's why I'm trying this corned beef by cooking to temperature this year to see if it gives you better results than what I've been getting. I've been getting okay results, but I want better than okay. I want 
exceptional results, if possible. All right, here we go. Oops, damn it. Let me just push this to the side. There we go. And now oh, for the last time. Mm, I can smell it this time. <laughs> All right. Now it's starting to get somewhere. And maybe a couple more minutes, and then this part will finally be done. Well, while I'm waiting, then that will work, okay? Good. Then get ready for the next step. Well, yes, I'm searing corned beef at this point as I get ready to put it into the pot. And gravy, eggs, and bacon for lunch today. So oh, nice in the number nine century. Wow. Oh, oh yeah, you've got a number nine century. Wow, that's an unusual number. Congratulations. There we go, I think. Let's see if that takes care of it. Look out. Well, that's looking a little better. All right, there we go. Now that we've done that, we turn this off. Okay, that means now. Here we go again. Move things around. <laughs> Here comes the next roller coaster ride. I get to move this all the way over here. You guys get a quick guided tour of my home. Again, uh, now I'm sure I think that is the right one. There we go. That's better. All right. Now the other camera. Yeah. Anyway, filming a video takes a while. Filming of the filming of video <laughs> is taking even longer. Because I've got to adjust this again. There we go, that's pretty good. All right, that means now. Here we are. Next, find my basting brush. Here it is. It is now oh, a little darker. Okay. Looks like it's time to turn on a light. It's not as bright as it was before. Okay. There we go. That helps. Okay. Now that we've done that, where did I put it? Here it is. As I said, we've got brown mustard. Actually, what I should probably do, yeah, that, that's what I should do, in fact. Um, 
I want the cap, I want the fat cap on the top so that it will melt, if I remember right. Although I think with slow cooking, I don't think it matters too much. So I can probably keep the fat cap on the bottom. Then it'll melt into the uh, into the veggies. Besides, it won't completely melt anyway. Okay. So that means, let's turn it over this way first so that I can put it in the pot and then coat it. All right, brand new thing of mustard. There we go. And turn this on so I don't forget. And here we go. Oh, it wasn't that exciting. <laughs> Still, here we go. Gonna have a nice coating. Most of which, of course, is going to uh, either dissolve or, or the like, because again, it's going to be braising. This is going to be in a covered pot full of moisture. But it should be enough to mix it in. So there we go, which is why a nice thick coating is just fine, and it should not overdo it. If anybody disagrees, please feel free to say so. Okay. Now that we've done that, now we've got to change the perspective again. This pot back here. I should probably dig this, bury this spice bag more down underneath. There we go. And in fact, one other thing I should do even before I uh, put that in. The beer. Blue Moon what, Belgian White Wheat Ale. There we go. At least it's an ale. I just realized only now that I didn't even have time to get some Guinness. But this should do. Now, where did my... Okay. Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. Let me show you something else. Uh, this is a cast iron bottle opener that was made by Burrow Furnace, you know, the uh, one in New, York, in New York State. Burrow Furnace was one of the first of these new Kickstarter um, crowdfunded cast iron companies, way back like around maybe 2012 or so. Uh, when they were doing their initial funding run, I sent them a small donation, and as a result, they sent me a cast iron bottle opener which works just fine. In fact, I don't even trust myself. There we go. Okay. Let us do the beer. There we go. And now, at long last, after all that, corned beef will go into the pot. Carefully. Because <laughs> I don't want to get mustard all over the place. Especially me. Okay, here we go. And in we go. Ha! Huh. All right, it fits barely, but it fits. Um, I bumped the top a little bit. There we go. Which means now we just give it one more coating. And then comes the last step. Much as I would have liked to, I think I'm going to just get the uh, wired probe right now. Because I am pressed for time, quite frankly. You know, time is ticking. So, 
But there we go. We now have our corned beef in the pot, which means the last thing will be probe thermometer. Whoa, don't want this thing to fall over the edge. That would not be good. <laughs> All right. Good old Thermopro. Okay. And that means let's do it in a way so that it will, let's just simply stick it in like so. Come on. There we go. Got it. Twist it down to the bottom. And at last comes the lid. That's why I like this. This is a metal wire. That's why I feel safe about having it in this in this pot with the cover and with all that liquid. Okay, so now the last step. We're finally getting down to it. Got to get back to the oven once again because we've got to have the shot of this thing going in the oven. So we've got yet a bit more acrobatics or theatrics to do. We need to change the direction of the light. I can just bring this thing over to the oven first. Put it on top, that is. Oh man, this thing is heavy. Ugh. I don't trust this. Do not trust it one bit. Okay, this is cool. There we go. Better. All right, that's better. Okay, next. Uh, this camera. Set this up. Again, up in the air. And one other thing, like I said, um, where'd that? Need to adjust the oven racks. No, and now at last, the last shot. <laughs> okay. In we go, and. In we go. Come on, do this right. There we go. I don't fake those noises, by the way. <laughs> okay, stop that. And now at last, the absolute last shot, and that is to set the thermometer. I'm just going to raise this again. <laughs> All right. So this is an, an idea of what it's like for me. For me to make a video here in my kitchen. Chaotic, <laughs> very clumsy, very low budget. Usually the results have been pretty darn good though. 
Okay, actually, I think I'll do it this way. There we go. I'll just hold it in my hand. <laughs> There's a concept for you. It'll look better. All right, right now it's, and besides, I only have to bring it up a few degrees to um, turn this on. Two hundred three degrees. Now, I really hope it's done within the next four hours or so. I hope I'm not jinxing myself by saying that, because you know, anybody who slow cooks meat on the grill or in their smoker, you know all about the stall. That's when it gets to the point around maybe about one hundred sixty to one hundred seventy degrees. And it stays there for hours and hours and hours because, of course, um, that is because the, um, what is it, the sinews or the collagen or something, that has to melt before it can cook anymore. However, since we are using a covered cast iron pot, my understanding is that will prevent the stall from happening, or at least I hope so. All right, blue moon is a bit too sweet for me, but I've never used it for cooking. Yeah, I am not a beer expert either. I can only hope it turns out okay. But then again, would you say Guinness is sweet? Um, either way, at this point, we've got it in the oven, and we are uh, ready to just wait and hope and cross my fingers. <laughs> That's about all I can do. All right. Oh, well. Okay. So I've got my guests coming in about uh, another two to three hours. So I've got plenty of time to clean the kitchen and clean up this mess here. And then, uh, oh, yeah, as I said, I'm also going to be preparing a uh, pot of uh, cold cannon, as I mentioned, to go with this. And I actually went to the store, my bad, and bought <laughs> A soda bread. I have made soda bread and it's turned out okay, but for baking tonight, as I mentioned, I want to do a giant cookie and see how that turns out because uh, with any luck, it will be a green giant cookie. And that's what I'm about to find. That's what I'll be finding out. Nonetheless, that's how we do it. Okay, folks, I'm probably going to wrap up now because we've. Uh, accomplish what we set out to do. I've been uh, busy playing with my cast iron yet again. Got to see, uh, well, you got to see at least the Lady Liberty skillet, even though I didn't have a chance to cook it. We got to see the uh, BSR number 10, and we got to see the, uh, uh, once again, the uh, number three poiki. So at this point, as I said, all I can do is get ready for my guests. And I hope I didn't waste your time this Saturday afternoon. I can only hope you I can only hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> you know, filming of the filming of a video, or as they usually call it in those extras on the DVDs, the making of. <laughs> in this case, it's the making of the making of. But there we go. But as always, thank you everybody for showing up too. Uh, especially since, again, this is a spur of the moment thing. This is on a Saturday. Um, I can only thank you very much for uh, being here. And I hope this was entertaining. And as always, please feel free to make as many comments as you want, especially about the method that I use to cook this corned beef. And we will see how it turns out. So thank you very much, everybody. And I will, uh, of course, I will see you all again on YouTube and on Instagram and on, I guess, on TikTok. And, um, well, I will again, once again, see you all next Wednesday. So have a good day, folks.